who is most susceptible to breast implant illness, aka BII? Um, this question came up a lot in the comments, uh, in my DMs, and when I polled to see what you guys were interested in uh, learning more about um, in terms of my experience with breast implant illness. And I love that question because I think it helps people who are considering getting breast implants to make a more informed decision. And I think that people who have them who might have been struggling with chronic fatigue and insomnia and GI issues and hormone dysregulation and mood and all that stuff, um, to start to really understand that it's not their fault. Um, one of my friends said to me, you know, I think why a lot of people might not uh, talk about breast implant illness from this point of like, mm, it's not okay, we need to recognize it more, treat it better, um, break the stigma around it. Well, what's the stigma? I think what, what the feedback was is if you elect for that surgery, if you're asking for it and um, you get sick from it, well, that's your fault to like, too bad and I, I just think that's such a reductionist way of looking at it it's like no we are allowed to make decisions about what we do to our bodies without judgment from other people as to whether we get sick from it or not it's like no no it's not that black or white we can get plastic surgery get sick from it and also expect a higher standard of, of treatment and care um, or or accountability um, or support you know so a let's just kind of like shelf that idea that because we are asking for this surgery that we don't deserve to be able to um, want better health for ourselves if we get sick from it um, and I think you know this not I think the, the the information that I've gathered both from my surgeon and from research is that um, high anxiety type people tend to be the ones that get breast implant illness. So what that might look like is more autoimmune type presentations, chronic skin irritation, chronic mood stuff, um, you know, just like a sluggishness, chronic fatigue, just inflamed and chronic GI stuff. So um, what does that have to do with breast implant illness? Well, think about the mechanism of action of um, having chronic anxiety. So let's say you grew up in a home where um, there was a lot of stress or maybe you weren't seen and validated and protected. Maybe you were bullied. Maybe somebody you were growing up with um, had an addiction and that took precedence over your um, over your your existence. You know, it could be having a sibling who was really horrible to you for years and years and years. You know, Whatever it is, when we look at the, um, the function of the vagus nerve and we look at how we are primed as, as primal beings because we still have our reptilian brain, right? It's actually three quarters of our brain is, is going to be operating from that, um, that reptilian, that more limbic system, more um, primitive reactive part of our brain. So when we're going through these traumas, and the vagus nerve is doing its job and keeping us hypervigilant, that state of hypervigilance is also um, being in a chronic state of fight or flight. And we know that when you're in that state, you are in a chronic state of inflammation, right? And you're not digesting and you're not detoxifying. Um, I feel like I wanna get that sentence tattooed on my forehead because it is going to be, it's so simple, it's so simple, yet we keep missing it. If we don't start to um, learn how to nurture our, our nervous system back to a state of rest and digest, and we put something like breast implants in our bodies, um, that will further lend to the afferent signaling to the brain that something is wrong. There's a foreign invader, uh, upregulate the immune system, make sure that you know inflammation is happening because there's a foreign invader and inflammation. Chris! inflammation um, will help you to you know fight off that impl the implants in theory but what ends up happening is we actually um, create these 
encapsulations, these encapsulated contractures to protect our body from whatever that foreign invader is. And in the encapsulation is where a lot of pathogens will build. So it's adding insult to injury. Um, and it just creates this environment that will foster um, infections and inflammation and heat and you know a uh, taxed immune system and the nervous system the vagus nerve being constantly triggered in fight or flight because the body's under attack so i think you know i could be oversimplifying it but from what i'm understanding so far the people who are most susceptible to breast implant illness are the ones who um, are in a chronic state of fight or flight and complex PTSD isn't the only trigger I mean it could be possibly um, it could also be uh, like a, a concussion or a car accident um, PTSD of any kind or just chronic periods of heightened stress if you had a boss who was making your life hell for a year at work and you noticed that your health was declining, I mean, these are all things to take into consideration. How well do we respond to stress? That is what we want to think about before getting implants. And if we have implants and you're already sick and you don't want to take them out, you know, I spent, yeah, that's your decision obviously, but I spent a good eight years maybe longer 10 years I put in a lot of effort into healing my gut and my hormones and my brain etc um, with you know improvements but really it took me taking them out for me to actually see that it wasn't a lack of effort in healing it was I was up against like Bowser and I just couldn't win I didn't have the juice <laughs> I guess to do it it just they had to come out so I think that's something that um, that you guys could consider if you haven't put them in yet if you have put them in and you want to take them out um, cost is a conversation that's been coming up a lot in the DMS that I've been having and the thing is a lot of people will pay for it um, because certain surgeons are not covered by OHIP to diagnose and treat uh, breast implant illness through OHIP, but um, some are, and the one that I went to uh, is, his name is Dr. Gay, he is G-U-A-Y, he is um, Nicholas Gay, he's in Kleinberg, he has his own clinic there, and he specializes in um, explant surgeries, he specializes in um, uh, on-block procedures, so you know, when you're getting the implants out, you want to make sure that it's an on block removal so that they're taking the whole capsule out with the implant intact. Otherwise, if they're just pulling the implant out through an incision at the bottom of the breast or through the nipple or the armpit, um, what's in that encapsulate in that capsule will stay in the body and that is the toxic part. So we want to um, make sure it's an on block procedure. So yeah, check him out. Dr. Nicholas Gay um, covered by OHIP. He's absolutely lovely. I, I had a seamless um, int like experience everything from the day of the surgery post-op care. Everything has been wonderful um, There are other doctors I'm sure that are covered by OHIP, but he was closest and had great reviews um, I had another question of how did I know that I was suffering from breast implant? I actually uh, got diagno diagnosed with mold toxicity, with really, really, really high levels of mold toxicity. And um, when I started researching how does somebody become this sick with this type of mold, um, a lot of the articles were coming up about breast implant illness. Aspergillus is the kind that I had. I think I had two, one, oh my God. Your baby, oh my God. <laughs> this woman has this little chihuahua on his back, just being so cute. Um, so then I just started doing some research and found that, you know, this is really common and you can, I could get it out and it was covered by OHIP. So I was like, I'm gonna do this. I don't need my breast implants anymore. I actually um, really would love to wear a blouse without the buttons like popping and you know if I wear a bikini I didn't want to always look so se sexual it just I felt like a lot of um, 
unwanted attention and you know things change from when you're 21 to 38 like I I wanted that attention to make lots of money as I was bartending um, and I thought it would like make me more desirable but um, at this stage in my life I'm like nah I, I don't need it I actually don't want it um, so something that I wanted to end with is the idea of what other procedures could we do that are better for our health aside from breast implants and um, something that my surgeon recommended was he said you know what women could do instead is um, fat grafting so if you're looking for a bigger size you could do fat grafting where they take fat from another part of your body and put it into the breast um, to give you more fullness or he said a lift he's like a lot of times women just need a lift or want a lift and instead they're getting implants and these are invasive in the sense that you're having surgery but also a lot less invasive because you're not putting foreign uh, materials in your body um, so I hope that all sound like serves to be of some help um, and help to make a little bit more sense I think that you know, if you're dealing in, in closing, I think if you're dealing with any chronic inflammation, any chronic anxiety, any unresolved PTSD, um, possibly, you know, chronic gut infections, make sure you test for mold. Mold is a wildly under-recognized, under-diagnosed and untreated, um, severely impactful uh, illness to come across. And I think that those things need to be dealt with before making any decisions about implants. Um, so if any of you guys have questions, let me know. I also offer mold testing and mold treatment as well as GI functional GI testing and um, anti-infection protocols um, for people who might think that they're dealing with that. And I also um, offer neuro neuroplasticity-based brain retraining programs. So if you have any questions, my new website is about to launch with all of the info on my courses. Um, very soon be well with hope.com in the meantime just drop me a line if you have any questions okay I am keeping my bandage on like a really good girl and trying to stay in the shade got my nice tattoo yesterday and um, yeah I'm gonna enjoy the Sun maybe take a nap on the beach here it's quite a lovely day take care guys Bye.